Use six foot T posts at about six foot intervals to create the boundary of the attractant. Pound with the teeth facing out. Place hog panels for every T post. Eight foot panels are easiest, but you can use 16 foot panels or cut the 16 footers in half with bolt cutters. Wire the hog panels together, overlapping one square for each one. The overlapped section will be at each T post. Stand the hog panels up one section at a time. The corner hog panels should butt into the corner T posts. Make sure to be lining up hog panels while pounding T posts in. Stand the hog panels up one section at a time. Corner T posts should be placed once that section is stood up. When selecting insulators, make sure they are compatible with the T post that you have and that you pick at least three inch insulators to keep hot wires from grounding out on the hog panels. Each T post is pounded in based on the overlap of the hog panel. Wire each T post to the hog panel in numerous places. Wire clamps can be used or tie wire can be used to complete this step. Make sure that all hog panels are secured to T posts. Now place the insulators. Four insulators per T post placed at approximately 10 inches, 20 inches, 30 inches, and 40 inches. Each wire is going to be hot. The panels will be grounded. At each corner, pound another T post at a 40 degree angle. This will be used to run the wire around the corner and not allow for any grounding to occur. For electric fences, we like to use at least 14 gauge wire with four strands around the attractant. There are numerous devices that help wrap wire around corners. All will work as long as they are not grounding the wire out. Set up the corners as you are running the strand of wire to avoid extra cuts and splicing. Ensure there are enough twists in the wire to avoid loose strands or grounding out. Corner pieces should be in line and placed at approximately 10 inches, 20 inches, 30 inches, and 40 inches. Place at least one ground rod near the charger. An extra ground rod can be placed opposite of the charger as well. Ground wire should be attached to the hog panels and the ground rod. Use electrical tape to secure wires to both the hog panels and the ground rod. Find a T-post that will allow the charger to face south. If none will work, you may have to add another T-post. Make sure the charger can be reached to allow for troubleshooting and turning the fence off from outside the perimeter. The green wire is the ground that should be connected to the ground rod. Now wrap wire on every strand that you want to be hot, connecting them all together. Now we will tighten each line one at a time. Place a person at each corner and assist pulling the slack up. When creating a gate, make sure to use insulated handles. These handles carry the charge through the middle and allow to be handled without turning off the fence. Once the wire is tight and cut to the right length, you are ready for the red clip which provides the charge to the fence from the positive or hot charger connection.
Unroll the fence and pick a starting spot that you would like to be an access point. This will be the spot that allows you to get in and out of the fence easier. When staking each post, tilt each post at 15 to 30 degrees away from the attractant and stake. Pound T post at every corner to help tighten the overall fence. Pound another T post inside the fence to hold your charger. South facing is best. A grounding rod works best, but you may be able to use a T-post as a grounding rod in wetter soils. Make adjustments as needed to ensure that the fence stays tight. Maintenance is a key proponent. Install extra fiberglass posts for increased stability if needed. The main thing to do is keep the grass cut down using a weed whacker.